simple truth is, if you don't have a vision, if you don't have a goal, if you don't see your future laid out in front of you, you are just floating around without a purpose. That every set that I do, every weight that I lift, I get one step closer to turning that vision of mine into reality and becoming that Mr. Universe. I could not wait to lift another 500 pounds in the squats. I could not wait to do another thousand sit-ups. I could not wait to do bench press, more bench press and more curls until I couldn't move my arms anymore. Because I knew that every rep got me closer to standing on that stage as a champion. As a matter of fact, when I lifted weights, I didn't really feel like I was lifting weights. I felt like I was lifting a trophy over my head each time I lifted. Ever think small. If you're going to accomplish anything, you have to think big. You have to go and shoot for the stars. The biggest challenge most people have is because they think small. And the reason why people think small and why they choose small little goals is because they're afraid to fail. They know that if you shoot for a big goal, then the chances of failing are very high. If you do something, then go all out and do it well. And this was not just the case in bodybuilding. I didn't just want to be a bodybuilding champion. I wanted to be the greatest bodybuilder of all times. I wanted to have the most muscle, the, the most muscle of all times, the most definition. I wanted to win the most trophies, the most world championship titles. I just wanted to be the best. I think it is natural that when you have a big vision and big dreams and you have big goals that people are going to say around you, I don't think it can be done. I think it's impossible or no. I tell you, I heard this all the time, but I want to tell you, don't ever let them stop you from dreaming and from shooting for the big goal. Early to bed, early to rise. Work like hell and advertise. So that's what I believe. Just remember, you can climb that ladder of success with your hands in your pockets. We should also work on we. Not just me, but also we. Remember that. To lead a truly full life, you must give back. You must leave the world a better place than you found it. When you're a competitive athlete, you learn very quickly how strong you are or how energetic you are, all of those things. But it could very well be that there's a lot of people who have an equally as good a body as you have. 
that performs just as well, that is as muscular, let's say in bodybuilding, has exactly the same kind of, uh, you know, proportions in all of those things. So the question really is, is what puts you over the top? It is the mind that really creates the body. It's the mind that makes you really work out the four or five hours a day. It is the mind that visualizes of what the body ought to look like as the finished product. Hello everybody. For the last two years, I've been doing exhibitions like this all over California in various institutions and prisons and hospitals and so on. And uh, I've been having a great time and it's a very satisfying thing for me to do, to spend one day every month to come to one of those places and to help the guys with their training and so on. When I used to do seminars on how to become a champion, I uh, would always ask people, why do you want to be a champion? Or what do you want to accomplish? Why are you training? And they will, if, you, if a guy will get up and he will say, well, I want to train because I think that if I get muscular and um, you know, I feel like I'm getting the kind of definition, then I maybe can end a, a bodybuilding competition. I said, sit down. I said, if you think this way, you're gonna be a loser. You're never gonna make it because there's no maybe. You got to get up and say, I want to be a champion. And I do whatever it takes. The amount of hours it takes, the posing, the this, the that, the visualization, looking at training footage, looking at motivational books, reading this, whatever it takes, I would do. That's the answer I want to hear from you. You can detect right away those that are going to be shaky and that will fall behind and they will not go all the way and those that are very hungry. And that hunger you have to develop because you have to create a goal for yourself, whatever that may be, a short-term goal and a long-term goal, and you got to go after that. And if you do not see it, and if you do not believe it, who else will? The body is very important, but the mind is more important than the body. We have to visualize what that body ought to look like in order to make it win, because that's what creates then the will, the will that you need to go to the gym every day the will that makes you go into the four straps, the will that makes you go beyond when you do your 500 pound reps in the squats and you can't do another rep and your body is shaking. It's the will that makes you go one more time down and struggle up one more time. And so it's all of this, so the mental aspect that motivates you and that makes the difference between you being in the gym full of joy and looking forward to doing that extra rep and looking forward to doing those extra 100 reps in the sit-ups and working past the pain barriers, that all is the mind, it's not the body. So this is why I think the body is very important, but the mind is more important than the body. So you got to go to the gym and feel like every rep that you do is getting you one step closer to that goal, to make that vision that you have turn into reality. And that's why when you look at pumping iron, for instance, you can see that we always had great joy in the gymnasium. And people always were saying, why would you laugh and have a good time? You're working at five hours. Well, we did because I knew that every workout, every five hours would get me closer to becoming the Mr. Olympia or the Mr. Universe or the Mr. World and all those things. And I think that if you think that along the way, you're not gonna fail, then you're blind because there's no one that I've ever met, no matter how successful they are, that haven't said that they had their failures along the way. You have to, I mean, the only way that you really know that you can lift 500 pounds is if you're willing to fail. So if you're afraid of failure, then you will never grow. The people that grow the furthest are the people that really don't care. They fail or they make it, they're gonna take that risk because that's what you have to do. I think what we learn in sports is very helpful to anything and everything else that you do in life. So now you apply that principle to acting. And you say, you say, well, wait a minute, I put five hours in every day in working out, I did my posing one hour a day, I did my stretching and this and that, and all of those kind of things. So now let me apply the same thing to my acting career. 
Let's go to acting class every day. Let's go and work on the accent the same amount of time with the same will and let's visualize what, it, what, what am I shooting for? Okay, I want to be another Clint Eastwood. I want to be another John Wayne. I want to be another Kirk Douglas, all those great heroes that I admired as a kid. So that's what I'm going after. And that same principle works, even though there's so many people around that say, no, you will never make it because you have an accent, you, you know, your body is too big and your name Schwarzen, Schnitzel or whatever, you know, who can pronounce that? But you know, it doesn't matter if anyone else knows and if anyone else believes in it, but you know, and that you know that that principle of visualizing yourself as a star will work and you, all you have to do now is go towards that vision. I've retired from bodybuilding in 1975 and I signed a series of Conan movies. Here I was, big studio behind you, budget $20 million, of course, which was in those days is an equivalent of today, $150 million. I was going to Australia to be a judge at the Mr. Olympia competition. But then all of a sudden, I thought, you know, I should compete. I think the competitors felt very disappointed. Uh, so they felt kind of, why would I do that? Why would I take that trophy away from them and I have everything else on the plate? And so I think there was disappointment there. And, um, you know, I just felt, well, that's something that I need to do. I felt very strongly about it, and so I competed. So now you apply that principle in my political career. This historic election has come about because there's a tremendous disconnect between the people of California and the leaders of California. I'm running for governor to lead a movement for change. I want to be the people's governor. I will work honestly, without fear or favor, to do what is right for all Californians. Join Arnold and let's bring California back. People see me as a big action here on the screen, and they expect the same kind of bigger-than-life action in reality. That's why in my political career, people always say to me, well, but this is politically risky to go and start, for instance, talking about prison reform. People don't want to go and even talk about that. So I say, well, I said, yeah, maybe it's politically risky, but in the meantime, we have 172,000 prisoners in facilities that are built for 100,000, and something is going to break, and something is going to happen. I want to fix it. I feel very strong that I can bring people together. I feel very strong that I could unite Democrats and Republicans. You know, all of those things. And I knew exactly what needed to be done to turn the economy around, to bring jobs back, to bring businesses back, to reform, you know, workers' compensation, and to do all of those things. I knew there's certain things that we have to do to turn the economy around and to make people in California feel like that this is, in fact, a golden state. And true enough, after I have announced and after I ran and after I won, you know, all of the things that I've planned became a reality. I always use bodybuilding as an example for a lot of things that I do. If it is talking about the budget, if it's talking about the environment, if it's talking about prison reform, somehow I always get in my experience of what I've learned in bodybuilding and then somehow tie it in of what I'm doing today. I have learned a tremendous amount and every day still is a learning experience.